What's up? What's up? So yesterday I was making this ghost sword, and um, today I've refined it a little bit, and I'm gonna continue working on it and finish it. Um, there's a little lot more animation to do with it, and um, also I'm really excited to actually be making a fear sword version of this. So you got you got this regular ghost sword, right? It's an item you get which allows you to sh shoot these um, projectiles. Um, and the lower your health gets, this is from a suggestion from yesterday. Thank you once again, people watching and suggesting things. So the lower your health gets, the less the, sh the sword can go, the di less distance it goes. So if I get down to pretty low on health, there's a point where it won't even, won't even go. In fact, and, I, and I'm really going to play with that, too. So, like, yeah, here, I'm almost at no health. Can't even shoot the sword anymore. So it works off your courage. What's up, PETA? Yeah, I'm still working on it, man. Still working on it. But I got some amazing news with it. There's going to be the Fear Sword version. So this is going to be a rare item. So there's um, the regular Ghost Sword is this purple one. That one you're probably going to find pretty easily in the game. Like, it might be one of the first levels you get this, right? And then you can combine it with the fire, ice, or lightning to create any one of these. What's up, love? And then a rare item is going to be fear. You're going to be able to find fear. And then if you combine fear with the ghost sword, you get the fear sword. So this is going to be a rare item. But what's cool about the fear sword is that the fear sword works off of your fear. So the lower health you get... This, this is when this thing starts to activate. So as, as you get lower and lower and lower in health, this thing gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So it'll be the exact opposite of the Ghost Sword. So that should be sweet. That's, that's combining your guys' ideas from yesterday. So I, I'm really thankful you guys shared those two, those two ideas. of One, making it based on your um, how much health you have, and then also reversing it. So that's what the Fear Sword is going to be. So yeah, excited about that. So, um, first thing I want to do is create, uh, yes, totally. Yeah. Your idea from yesterday became the fear sword. So thanks love. And, um, I think it was, I think it was, uh, what's his name? Uh, one of the new guys mentioned, um, mentioned making it based on how much health you have. So that's pretty cool. So I need to do something to. The attack system starts shot. If yo, what's it was Jonah one nine? Oh, what's up, Jonah one nine? Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, so thanks to you two, I think this is gonna be a freaking sweet item. So Jonah one nine, this is gonna be a super rare item, the fear sword. So you're gonna have to find this special like bottle of fear or like a chip of fear or something like that. Combine it with the ghost sword, and that gives you the fear sword. So this is going to be a rare thing, but it'll be sweet to be, to be have it like kick in as you get lower and lower in health. So yeah, really excited about this item. So um, I want to make the starch. I, what I want to do now is make it so that the, the ghost sword right now, it, it looks pretty good, but I want it to fizzle out as it, as it gets towards the end of its lifetime or its duration. I want it to fizzle out and just look cool, right? Right now it just disappears, which I know, I guess that would work if it were a, if it were truly an 8-bit game, but this is a, this is a 32-bit slash 8-bit game, so we want that thing to fade out and look really cool as it um, as it hits the end of its lifetime. So, um, the first thing I want to do is create a release animation, so when um, it's a it's gonna be almost exactly opposite of the launch. In fact, I'm just gonna reverse the launch animation. I've actually added a new um, a thing to my profile so I can I can go reverse an animation. So I can take the exact same animation as the launch and then just reverse it, and that'll create a release. So now that we've got that, I want to go into the system for launching a shot or starting a shot, which is a projectile. And yo, what's up, Lith? Howdy. How's it going, man? How's school?
Here it is. Okay. Now, if this thing has a release animation, we're going to run that after a delay, which is going to be, we're going to delay the duration of this thing's life, which we already have, which is the remove timer. We're going to subtract out the, dur the duration of the animation for the release, and that will give us the amount of time we need to delay to, in order to run this. So, Okay, so first of all, we need to know that it even has a release. So let's get the key for that. Render system get animation e release. Now if e dot profile dot profile dot has animation then we can do this. So the the, de the delay is going to be remove timer. Actually, let's let's store this animation. Or no, we, we need to get the animation. So auto anim equals e dot profile dot profile dot get animation key. Um, in fact, you know what? This should this is a little more efficient if I do it this way nm not equal to null. Just finished physics right on. You're just starting your summer break. It's like August. Oh, what? So you only have a week and a half? Dang, man. Did you did you have classes through the summer then? Yeah, good for you. You started working on a C++ strategy game. Awesome. Uh, what game engine are you using? Or are you maybe just going straight OpenGL or something like that, or what? So yeah, what engine are you using? Oh, whoops. No, that's not what I meant. This is going to be render system um, get directional an M key. There. OpenGL? Sweet. Making your own engine. Wow. All right. That's, I highly recommend doing that kind of stuff when you're younger. When you're in, like when you're in college and things like that, make your own game engine. But uh, I think that the further you get into game development, it's really nice to already have an engine, you know. It's really interesting when you're first learning to make your own engine because you really get to learn a lot through that process. But today, I almost think it's a waste of time. But but that's that's only at my age. I'm like I'm like an ancient game developer. I should have a giant beard. In fact, one day I'd love to have a giant beard. That would be sweet. Okay, so we're gonna go render dot sprite dot schedule once. We're going to pass in a lambda function, and then uh, the next parameter is delay. I don't know what's up, but my Xcode is not auto-completing things today, and I think it's because it uh, it updated itself to 6.4. If anybody knows what the heck went wrong in Xcode 6.4 that it's not auto-completing sometimes, please let me know. Nice. Right on. Cool. Yeah, I hope I hope this is a really, really fun game. I want to make it fun for myself to play, too. That's my, my ultimate goal. This is my dream game to play. That's why I'm making it. So, um, yeah. So it better be fun. So we got a delay here. And let's call this release NM for its key. We need... The EID. Oh, whoops! This is the wrong place for all this. E is the is the entity that's shooting the projectile. Shot is the projectile. So we 
Here we go. Let's do this. Let's do this down here. Yeah. Release animation. Cool, 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 cool. Did we already got the E? No, we don't. We need to we need to save the E in. Shot that ID. Pass that into this lambda function. Grab that. Actually, we can just go um, entity get render component for id dot set animation. Yeah, we can just do one single animation for this. Oh, we want to capture the key too. In fact, do we have key in this constant or this? No, we need. I think we need a cat. We need to. See what I mean? This should have erred on me already, but it's not. Xcode is like just messed up. Either that or it's just messed up on my project somehow. Key zero. See if that works. If this works, then we'll we'll see um the we'll see it fade out as it as it dies. I don't think it did. I don't think that worked. So let's I'm gonna step into this and figure it out why. Okay, so start this off. We want to start stepping. See what the key is first of all. Come on. I'm trying to I'm trying to mouse with my I shouldn't be doing that right now. I'm trying to mouse with my graphics tablet. It's hard. You gotta use the right tools. Don't strain your rigging. So we just want to see local variables. Simple. Keep it simple. Alright, cool. We got the key is released. That's what I want to see. Next thing. A nim. This should be okay. Cool. We've got an animation. That's good. What have we got? Total delay units ten. Delay per unit point one. That doesn't seem right. Oh. <laughs> this needs to be shot right there. Okay. That should really, really help us out. Let's turn off the debugging now so we can just hope that it works this time. Oh, and also we don't really need, we would rather, this should be like this shot.render, but it doesn't really matter. So all we were doing there is just scheduling a callback. Didn't matter. Oh, it's, I'm still not seeing it fade out. Okay, back to debugging. Let's do that again. We should have to remove Tyner. That should be right. That should be right. What's up, Lime Studios? Yo, yo, yo. This is day two making the um, Ghost Sword. And eventually we'll get to making the Fear Sword, which is going to be a super rare item you have to craft. The fear sword thrives off your fear. The ghost sword thrives off your courage. So we got key and then let's see if this NM looks. Yeah, six. Yes, yeah, six. Six frames. 0.05 per frame. That's what we want to see. We got id is shot id delay. Let's see what that comes out to be. Delay 0 0.69 nine. That's a great number. Um, so the remove timer was 1.0, an get duration would be 0.3, which would be 6 times 0.05. So yeah, that's turning out correct. Delay is good. So shot.render.sprite, schedule once, e and key. Get the render component, set the animation to key. Let's set, the, let's set a callback here. Let's see if this is actually happening. 
Oh, I don't think it did. I don't think it's hitting that. Oh, yeah, it's hitting it. Okay. So now set animation. This is the correct render component, I think. Oh yeah, totally, man. Of course. Yeah, I hope that works out. If uh, what, what we're talking about here, um, I'm gonna I'll mention this again. I'll please if it, if somebody thinks of this, try and remind me to say this again before I go. But um, there's a there's this thing. It's sort of like Shark Tank, but for game developers. So if you're a game developer and you're just starting your game or something like that and you have an idea and you'd love to get some funding for it, this is a like a TV show that you go on to, you pitch your idea for a video game to some top industry professionals and they vote for who's the coolest game or whatever and then if you win, you get funding for your game. So um, here's the instructions, you just uh, email this address, videogamerscasting at gmail. You send them your recent picture, contact information, a brief description of your game, and tell us why you think it's going to be awesome. So, there's that. I'm trying to tell people that. Well, they said it had to be by today at 5. Wow. Well, <laughs> there's 15 more minutes. Okay, well, I think I, I, think I pretty much did my due, due diligence there on that one. So I hope I hope that hooks I hope that turns into something freaking awesome for somebody that watches this stream. That'd be rad. So okay, um, key release. That's correct. We know it has this animation. Um, I think this should be the right render component, <laughs> right? We got T minus fourteen, thirteen. Elapsed. What's this? Launch. Even better than getting this render component would be if I got an actual entity. Help me debug this to see the actual entity. You can verify its ID, that kind of stuff. L lately, I've really learned how to debug easier. I've noticed that when you break things down and you save things into variables and stuff, it makes it a lot easier to debug. Like you can see, I just the beforehand I had some code which was a little more dense. It was more tightly. Oh, see, this is taking a while for this to kick in. Hmm. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Or it might be just the animation is is messed up. But anyways, what I was saying there was I had this all densely packed into one line of code. That makes things harder to debug. Because when you get in there in the debugger, you're like, oh man, and I gotta step into all this and figure out what the heck that is and that is and that is. So the more the more you store things in variables and the more you put things on separate lines of code, the easier it is to debug in general. Uh, okay, so I wanna see that one more time and see if this is the correct entity. If it is, then there's just something wrong with the, the animation. It's not running it. Oh, oh, I know what it is. I know what it is already. I bet you it is the right entity. And it needs f.render.flags. We'll take away the k render and m overridable flag. So this is what happens is I have in my render system, I've got this flag called overridable. Every time I call set animation, it by default runs an animation that is overridable. What that means is as an entity is moving around, it sometimes can run like a, a different animation, like a running animation or another animation. Every function should only do a single thing, but that never happened. No, true. This is very, very true. This is a, this is a very, very, this is like one, one of the cornerstones of good coding is right here. Writing in the smallest possible functions you can. 
<laughs> wow, I love debug mode, right? Yeah, you, I guess you kind of do got to love it a little bit. I, the one thing I love about debugging is when I finally figure it out, I'm like, oh, what's up, Felix? Yeah, it worked that time. Nice. Oh, I love how it fades out. Oh, it looks so good. And let's see if it can hit an enemy. Yeah, right at the very end, it hit that enemy. That's pretty cool. Cool. Oh, it's looking sick. Totally. Debugging, love-hate relationship. I think we can all, uh, we can all attest to that. Love-hate. Yes, oh, this, yeah, this, this item is very much like Zelda. Nice, you been playing Hero Bash, right on. It's great, I hope you enjoy it. Um, should I tell the Hero Bash story again? Like, I'll mention it really quick. My lesson I learned from making my last video game is that you've got to market your game from day one. So, the, the game I made with my buddy is called Hero Bash. The, the biggest problem with our game was that we didn't market it from day one. I know, right? Yeah, I've, I've kind, of, I've finally learned to just love myself, anyways. Even though I, I kind of want to hate myself, that I, that it was that easy. Yeah, this is the last game I made before, before this game, Songbringer. I made this with my buddy. Oh yeah, good, good for you, man. Get that homework done. Yeah. So what I, what I, we learned here was that. You know, it's we, we have this tendency as game developers to not want to show our stuff until it's polished, right? You don't want to show your game because you think people are going to, like, hate it. Do you think people are going to, like, really hate on you? You know, even your friends. You don't want to show even your friends sometimes things. There's another thing is sometimes as a game developer, you, you don't want to share things with other people because you think they'll steal it. That's another common fear among game developers. And I... I challenge every other game developer that's watching this right now that ever sees this, you've got to get over that fear, both those fears. They're, they will they will completely ground your project. Your project will probably not take off if you give in to those fears. Because what happened with this, we just wanted to make it perfectly polished until until we made it so awesome. And then we, we wanted to start marketing it. Because we came from the 90s when that was kind of the thing you were supposed to do in the 90s, right? You wanted to make your game perfect and then you like were supposed to hire people to market it. There wasn't really no such thing as the internet really that strong back then. So, um, so my lesson here I'm trying to share is share your game from day one. Get over your fears. That's what will make your game a success is if you share it. If you keep hiding it, if you keep hiding what you're doing, you're never gonna you're never gonna share it, and you're never gonna be successful. Yes, 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 yes. It's a very common thing. So, anyways. I have to share that lesson as often as I can because it, it took me two years of my life to learn that lesson. We spent a year and a half making that video game, uh, like full time, full time, two guys for a year and a half. And to this day, that game makes about $20 a month just because, and it probably could have done a lot better had we marketed it from day one and had we put some energy into telling people about it. <laughs> nice. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. If you're going to tell anybody about something, tell them about Songbringer. Because um, Hero Bash is, is just waiting in the wings for me to upgrade it at some point. You know, I'll, it's some Someday I'll, I'll probably go and revisit that and do it better this time. You know, mar Again, start from scratch with it sort of and, and market it from day one. So, um, so that'll be for a future project. Um, so this is great. Oh, man. Yeah, this is really, really awesome. In fact... Next, next step in this whole evolution of making this thing is we got a rad launch animation. This is what that launch animation looks like. It just sort of like sort of materializes. I'm using the exact opposite of this animation for the release, and the the actual while it's running. In fact, I could probably just take out the run animation. Thanks, Jonah One Nine. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that, man. I'm I I feel that more and more too. But what's crazy is when I first started this, no one would have said that, right? If you go back and look at my video, my videos from day one, all I had was a brown screen. I didn't really have that much to show for it. 
and there's barely anybody watching this live stream. I had no followers on Twitter. I had basically no followers on, on Twitch, basically no followers at all. Nobody really cared or knew what Songbringer was. But day by day, I just kept sharing it and sharing and sharing it. And now it's now people are stoked about it. So once again, share your game. Get over your fears. Just be courageous and do it. That's why I have the word courage at the top of this whole... This, every one of my files, I have the word courage. That's just to remind me to be courageous about little things like that. So anyway, sorry to rant, but I think it's important. So I think what I can do now is take away this Go Sword run animation. It doesn't need this. Hey, thanks for following. And yeah, and, it, and it's built into even a cool community. It's so sweet. Just do it. What's his name? Alex Bufia or something? Do it! What game engine? This is Coco's 2DX. It's a C++ cross-platform open source engine. It's pretty rad. I highly recommend it if you're familiar with C++ already. Um, and you want to make it... It, it also does 3D now, so you can do 2D or 3D. But um, I highly recommend this for people that are experienced game developers that know some C++ already. Or some OpenGL. What's up, Ben? I'm, I'm, I'm working on the Ghost Sword again. So I'm, I got it now to the point where it can materialize. It has like an intro animation, and now it has an outro animation, so it actually releases itself too. Yes, definitely, definitely. I think that's a big lesson, right? You, is like I learned that from watching other people do live streams, and I realized that a lot of them did not really interact with their with their people that were watching. So. I learned that, you know, that can help. Oh, the guy's evading. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. It looks like, okay, let's get the let's get a really long duration for this, because I want to see if this actually works without a run animation. Nice, right on. No, it does not have a wiki yet. It doesn't. Um, I'm almost I'm almost waiting for someone else to create a wiki. Because I'm not sure I want to maintain all that. I'm already developing this whole thing, and maintaining a wiki takes time. So I don't know. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, I know. I'm super late for you guys in Europe, and I try to get, I tried to do some earlier streams. So um, if you, sometimes you'll catch me a few hours earlier. Like I'm, I, today I started at about 4 30. Sometimes I started at 2 30, so it's a couple hours earlier. And I try and do that for most of you guys in Europe, because there's a lot of you guys that watch in Europe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low music, I've already been doing this. So since the Kickstarter phase, which was back in March or April, no, April, um, I've already been sending it out to um, popular YouTubers and also people from the media and things like that. And I started learning about that. And there's, I even have a few videos about how I was doing that. So... Um, Yes, this is a very very cool thing also for other people to do with your games. Once you get it to the point where it's kind of playable, you really want to send it to people. That's going to help it helps so much. I, I have a whole list. I actually have a file that I keep a list of everyone that I've contacted regarding Songbringer. So it's um here in this raw. I have this uh there's my list of backers, but um where is it? Oh, I think it's in this other folder. Press. Yeah, I have a press folder. So I keep a list of like everyone that's a press contact, what their email is, what their Twitter is, um, any other contact information I have, and especially a link to the articles they've already written. And also if they've requested the, for, to play a beta version or if I contacted them to find out if they want to play a beta. Anyways, yeah, so that's that thing's already going. And, and when I get the first beta version, which is going to be next month, um, maybe towards the end of next month, I'll probably reach out and contact even more media and stuff. Yeah, Lime Studios, when I'm done, it will, when you swing upwards, it will go up. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, I make the graphics. I do all this in, in Photoshop. I make graphics. I do all the music as well. I do my music in Ableton. I do sound effects in Audition. Oh, sweet, cool, Lime Studios, that would be great, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for somebody in the community to do that, and I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Yeah, totally. You're it's you're in Ireland, sweet. I I have some awesome Irish butter that I eat all the time. It's so good. Irish butter, mmm. 
Okay, so good. We got. Let's. Okay, I want to want to do is make this uh, last really really long. So when it does the ghost sword, let's get a, a maximum duration so we can see if it's got if it works if it plays out its entire launch animation. Then there's going to be some chunk of time where it should hit nothing, and then another chunk of time where it's like fading out. So. We'll set a max duration right here of like three seconds, which is three times what it was, and we'll see if that works. Hey, what's up, honey? Beast Rainbow. Welcome to the stream, man. Yes, it's so good. What's up, Ladder Thief? What's up, Melon? Yo. Yeah. Zub, I'm from um, I'm from Oregon originally, but I, right now I reside in California, in Oakland, California. So if any of you guys are ever in, in like the Bay Area for whatever GDC or whatever, feel free to contact me, and we can get together. I did that with Mars of Power, and yeah, I'm totally okay. Did that work? Whoa, I think it is. In fact, I can, oh, I got another thing I could do to make this even, f like, more. Yes, yeah, Co Kodik, it's uh, Songbringer. Songbringer.com. Uh, oh, yeah, so launching, let's make this super short so it its launch animation is really, really truncated. Nice pig Latin version. Uh. uh. Yeah, that's definitely working. Cool. So it runs its um, regular animation. Good. This is great. Okay, it's time to make the north animations. So we've got we've got launch, release, idle. I don't even know if we need idle. Let's try and get rid of this idle. I'd like things to be super efficient here. This might crash though, because I think everything requires an idle animation. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, so we do need an idle. Let's give it one frame. Go sword. Launch. East. Percent D. That'll work. That should work. Hey, thanks, Honey Beast Rainbow. Oh, Azimuth, no, I haven't redone all the property lists yet. Okay, another thing, I want you not to be able to have multiple of them on the screen, too. Oh, I have redone most of the property lists, yeah, so they're now all text files. But there's one thing left, I haven't done the strings, which is, when I actually edited this yesterday, I realized how awesome it would be to redo that, too. And Azarus, I have a question for you. Um, if I, okay, let me see if I can ask this question correctly. Um, Entity Foo. If I were to change Entity Foo and use Unique Pointers, I was reading about Unique Pointers today, thanks to Drake. Drake was writing me. He's, he was watching the stream yesterday. Um, to pass, if I were to... Add Component, right here. If Instead of using an, a Component Pointer, if I did Add Component like this and I passed in a Unique Pointer, to a component. I'm pretty sure I would do it like that, right? So that passes in ownership of it. So I really basically I'm constructing it, I'm constructing a unique pointer to a new component or to a component and then passing it in like this by copy constructing it. So that releases the ownership from the other function and passes it over to the add component if I'm correct there. And then to use that, what I would what I would have to call it like is this um, entity add component, and then I would have to do um, move right make unique um, render component, and then pass in the arguments for. A render component, right? Is that correct? Oh, okay. So it's not calling the copy constructors. It's using a move constructor. 
But is this correct right here? Do I have to do all of this? Do I have to do a move and a make unique? Nice. Good for you, love. Yeah, thanks, Lighter Thief. Yeah, yeah, Code. How do I say your name, by the way? Kotik? Kotik? Or can I just call you Blue? Yes, I did make Songbringer.com and I made my own website. Yeah. I've done some web development, too. Uh, Zub, yeah, I've been working on this about 187 days. It's a little bit more than that because I haven't included some weekends in there. So I've actually, I actually started this in November. So it's really been more like maybe 200, 220, 30, 40 days, something like that. So you could have an entity function create component. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I guess I could create a template function like that, huh? Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll think of doing that. Cool. I just want to make sure I was on the right path with understanding unique pointers there. Kotix. Ah, yeah, I know. I, sorry, I forget a lot of things. Kotix, Kotix, Kotix. Thanks, Zub. I try and work as fast as I can. I work a lot per day, so that's probably what contributes to how much progress is made. Okay, so good. We're ready to do the north-facing animation. So I'm going to go ahead. All I need is this launch. That's great. Cool, so all I, need, all I need now is a launch north and a launch south. So I'm going to say this is launch north. Um, say this as launch south. Reopen the other two. Right, cool. We got the east. That's done. Let's do south. So switch over to using the graphics tablet. Yes, yeah, the, the third sword is electricity base. Ah, uh, yeah. I actually have plans for a different item for that. Sort of like, um, sort of like Diablo's chain lightning. How how the lightning goes from enemy to enemy. So yeah, I I love that. I love this idea of chain lightning. And I can't actually. Maybe I'll do that one tomorrow. Um, because that's gonna be a freaking awesome item to have. You can like affect so many different enemies that way. But yeah, so that that's a cool idea, and I've I want to do that for sure. <laughs> oh, nice. You got your name from a captcha. Kotix, that's crazy. Dude, someone stole. Not cool. Nano, yeah, this is a this is um this is something people have um have brought up before, and I think that I probably will implement this at some point. I haven't actually thought of how I will do that yet, but yeah. It, so there is this is kind of an elemental game, right? There's there's fire, there's ice, there's lightning. So um, it would be really, yeah, it would be pretty cool to see some enemies that are really, really weak to certain elements and some that are strong to certain elements. That would really add some depth to the game. So I think I'm going to do that for sure. It's still on, it's on the ideas list. I should probably just start doing that soon, actually. South. Okay, cool. We got south. Let's just start by rotating it. Rotating the entire image will give us, yeah, that'll give every single one of these frames. Cool. Okay, so let's move things around. Oh, one thing too, actually it would be really cool to just go and straight up use an image size to scale it in its height. So 
the perspective this this game's at, thanks to Lighter Thief, I really finally started getting the perspective right for all the art. Um, so if I take my yo, what's up, Doc? What's up, man? Still working on the Fear Sword. Well, the the Ghost Sword, the Fear Sword. So, anyways, the Ghost Sword is the regular version of this thing, of this item where you can fire projectiles, and then the Fear Sword. So the Ghost Sword works off of your courage, right? Your life force, your bio energy. So that's what. So the the more you get hit by enemies, like if I start wearing down my health a lot, the the sword goes shorter and shorter distance. Oh, I, I hold on. I got I got to turn something off here. There's like a maximum. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that back to one. So yeah, it basically goes shorter and shorter distance. How would I go about doing that? I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'll, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Um, I'll probably start with one, one, yeah, breaking it down to its simplest elements. You probably just have a single, think of it as a single chain lightning, and then launch multiple different lightnings. That's what I would do. So yeah, as you get, as you're at full health, the sword goes pretty far. And then as you lose health, it goes a shorter and shorter distance until it doesn't even work at all. And so that's the ghost sword. And then the fear sword is going to be one that thrives off of your fear. So the opposite of bioenergy. It's going to be a super rare item. It's going to be very hard to find the fear sword. or make, Actually, you have to craft the fear sword. So you find fear, you combine it with the ghost sword, and you craft the, go, the fear sword. And that one thrives off your fear. So as you get lower and lower in health, it, um, it goes stronger and stronger. So... And that's also thanks to you guys, your ideas. Both those are your guys' ideas. So, uh, Felix, it's definitely, it definitely would be easier to have the code rotated, but it doesn't work that way. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't just rotate the image and then make it a little shorter in the height because that would not be pixel perfect. And this is a pixel art game. It's very important to keep the pixels exactly right. Yes, definitely. This is a, as as usual. I'm basically doing Zelda homages like like crazy. My plan here is to keep on doing. Yeah, they're working all right, right? My plan is to kind of implement a lot of the same features as Zelda, and get the game running that way, right? And then play with it until until it changes and becomes something really, really awesome and unique and new and stuff. So a lot of the mechanics of this game will kind of start as Zelda. And then they'll evolve kind of into their own, their own right. So whatever the perspective here is, about sixty percent. Yeah, exactly. It would it would definitely look weird to rotate it with code because the because the OpenGL and the way everything does it works, it kind of is is more accurate than I want it to be with pixel art. So with pixel art, you want those pixels to be a pixel should always be the size of a pixel. And with this game, since it's pixel art. When you blow it up to the resolution that's running out here, there's like eight pixels per actual pic pixel. You know what I mean? Eight eight actual pixels per graphical pixel that I'm trying to get across. So, anyways, you got to keep that in mind. Um, so if it's 48, and I do that 60%, or I'd like to use the five ratio, that'd be 29, 30 pixels. So let's do a height of 30 pixels, and that'll automatically squash it for us. There. Okay, cool. And then I can just center it all. In fact, I think I should redo this whole animation before. Because sometimes when you... Sometimes Photoshop is kind of weird about that. Actually, first one I should move is the end one. So we'll move this one all the way down to the bottom here. Let's make sure this thing's about center. It's 23 pixels on the, the left or the right. What was that? 24 on the left. That's that's about the center as it can get. So good. Next frame. Let's leave that one on so I can see where to put this one. 
cool. So what I was saying about animations was that um, Photoshop kind of messes up. It gets when you can do when you do animations with Photoshop, it um, each one of your timeline keyframes can have separate properties for every one of your layers. So sometimes it's better if you're going to move all your layers and stuff. It's better to delete all your timeline keyframes and do it to one frame and then redo your actual timeline. So that's the point I was trying to make there. Uh, PMC, is Photoshop best tool for pixel art? Not necessarily. Um, I, I, I kind of like to say that the best tool to use is the one that you're the most comfortable with. And I'm the most comfortable with, with Photoshop. So for me, yeah. But for other people, it just depends. Yeah, and also, yeah, I've heard pixel edit is great. It's it's like designed basically for pixel editing. Graphic scale, yeah, I've heard this one too. It's great. Welcome to the stream, you guys. Sounds crazy, PMC. Okay, cool. We got this all set up. Now we can redo the animation part of it. Keyframes. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is, yeah. There's some problems with Photoshop. One problem is that it does this propagate frame one thing you gotta just turn off every time um, yeah like lighter thief said it is kind of tricky to get it all set up with Photoshop but once you're used to it I think it's pretty solid for you for doing animations all right so we've got a south facing animation let's export this render it go sword launch south seven frames oh there's seven frames This other animation is missing a whole frame. Oh my god, this is so much easier than editing property lists. So glad I made this change. If anybody's looking at what the heck this all is, this is a a class I wrote called Valtry and I release it on GitHub too so you, you guys can use it if you want it's um, GitHub Nat Weiss, Valtry this is the code I use for reading those kind of files okay so we got a south animation let's see how it looks probably wanted to do mm, maybe a less lifetime too oh Missing something. Go sword launch E6. I thought there were seven frames here. Oh, southeast? What the heck? There's no southeast. Oh, E6. Ah, okay, so east, I must not have. Oh. Oh, this is two copy. We don't need. Ah. Okay, so this one was correct. This one is just duplicated. But it's not. It's weird. This one has an extra frame somehow, and it works. The other one doesn't have that extra frame. So anyways, go back. 
These should all be six. All right. Let's see how that looks. Oh no, it turned into the East animation at the end. That's weird. Okay, so it's probably in the system. Where it launches the shot. Oh, here it is. Attack system, start shot, where it runs the release. Oh, uh, I think I know what's going on. Thanks for following. It's the direction, so switch dir. It probably set the wrong key here. So let me see if that works up. All right, Lime, see you, man. Good night. Hey, what's up, Skittle Filler? It's going great, man. I'm working on this Ghost Sword still. What's up, Grizzly Bros? This is C++, man. So okay. We got key. This should be. This should have a south on it. It doesn't. That's the problem. So get directional and M key. The problem is that I should have stepped into that method. So I'm gonna step into this method, and it's gonna be it's gonna be getting its direction from I think the move component. So obviously this thing doesn't have a move component yet, or it doesn't have a direction that it's moving in yet. So that's why it's get directional and M key. Is not working. Yeah, it's last compass direction. Okay, so we need to set that before we call this method. Shot dot, uh, I think it's move dot last compass dir equals dir. Okay, so what I want to see happen now is to shoot one of these swords south, and it'll re it'll still be facing south when it when it releases itself. Oh, it didn't work again. Dang, what's up with that? Hello, Canadian. What's up, man? What's up, Gemini? Yes, I love Xcode, actually. It's a pretty rad editor. What you mean, almost done? This is weird. So we've just set the last compass direction. Let's see this one more time. Should be giving us a south key. Music? What are you talking about, man? So what did key end up being? Oh, we don't have we haven't looked yet. Ah, it's still release. So weird. Okay. We gotta step in.
Okay, stepping into this method, we're starting with the string key of release. That's right. If, and now e dot move. Last compass direction is south. Good. So we should be getting in here. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's not able to get that animation. Why is that? Um, did I spell it wrong? We've got release south. So weird. I guess I gotta step into that. Render system get animation. Why would that not be working? Okay, we've got Rhett. Rhett is really south. That's correct. Now, we're in here. It's also looking for E. Release south. We're still at the right entity, right? Profile. Oh! Once again, I bugged myself out by using E instead of shot. I just did this like minutes ago. Okay, anyways, AI system, or I mean the attack system, start shot. Shot. There. Okay. That should work now. Yeah, cool. All right. Let's go to another screen where we can see more what's going on. Yeah, cool. It's fading out. It's about the right height now. Let's go make sure it's working too so we can... Yeah, nice. Cool. Bam! All right, next one. We're going to do the north animation, very similar to the south animation. In fact, I should probably just save this south animation as the north animation and flip it although I want it to be at the bottom so once again I'm gonna Remove all these frames so I can redo the timeline so that these uh, frames line up. Whoops. Zero there. Thanks, Canadian. So I'm going to go straight to this. What's up? There. That is a distance of 14 pixels. Let's help me here. So I just go make sure every one of these moves is 14. Skill filler. You're a beginner. Sweet, man. You're learning at free code camp. Nice. Yeah, okay, I, I, I get this question almost every day, but uh, I love answering it. Um, when you're starting out making games, how do you start out? What's the best way to start out? I got two, two 
general things I think you should keep in mind while you're learning to make games. The first most important one is to keep doing what you love. Do what you love every day. What excites you? Obviously, you're excited about this at this point. You're still excited because you're just starting, right? Um, so keep on doing those things that you're excited about. If you run into something in game development that bores you or you hate doing or whatever, just don't do it. Don't force yourself to do things you don't want to do. Do the things you love to do, and that will make this whole experience for you awesome. It will be incredible. And not only that, but it will lead you in the right direction of, of doing what you want and also just becoming the person you want to become through this. You know what I mean? So do what you love and, and be excited about it. And if you're not excited about it, don't do it. So, um, and the second thing I recommend is to go find a game engine before you, before you, um, before you do anything else. Settle kind of yourself kind of on a game engine and make it your first goal to get comfortable with a game engine. So, there's several game engines out there. You can look at Unity. You can look at Unreal. Um, you can look at Game Maker. Game Maker is a great game engine. If you want to do more of the manual open source route, there's Cocos 2DX. There's other open source game engines out there too. So first goal, go play with almost every single one of those, right? And then find one that you really like. There's obviously going to be one of them that you're kind of more attracted to or you're like, you're like you really like that one or whatever. Just stick with that for a minute. You probably want to go stick with it for a few, like three to six months almost until you're, until you're finally comfortable with it. It takes that long just to get comfortable with the game engine. So then you can start learning programming. Then you can start learning how to make art and things like that. So that's my recommendation. I hope that makes, I hope that, uh, that helps you, man. All right, start right here. We got seven frames, this animation. What's up, Uhu? -huh? Cool, man, you made some progress. Yeah, you're always gonna have problems. What, what is it, what's the problem you have with it right now, with your graphics? Are, are you talking about making art or are you talking about the graphical part of your coding? Sweet. Awesome, man. Yeah, and please share your progress. You know, come back here and let me know how you're doing. You know, share some screenshots or whatever. <laughs> nice. It's true. Game development is difficult. It's not an easy thing. That's why that's why I really really want to focus want you guys to focus when you're especially when you're starting to be a game developer focus on the things you love. So who you're having trouble making art um Well, I mean I think this was your problem before, right? You're you're always having problems making art? Is that true? Have you done tutorials? What's up, T? I would I would start making tutorial. Did you did you do my tutorial, the one I shared with you from my website? Just give that link again. So you did. All right. So is that your problem? You're having you're having trouble making art because what you're not why are you having trouble? You're not you're just not happy with your art or what? Nice. This looks like a great introduction to pixel art overall. This is a good one to recommend.
Thanks for sharing, Lair Thief. I hope that helps you, hoo hoo boss. And the the thing I would try and recommend too is don't don't force this process. You want to enjoy this process. Making art is fun. And if it's not fun for you, like I, I like I was just saying earlier, I wouldn't do it. I would go find an artist. If it's not exciting you to do to make art, don't. Go find somebody to help you out. That's that would be my recommendation. And the less the less you force things, the more you allow things to happen. You know what I mean? Maybe you're not. Maybe right now it's not your thing. Art's just not your thing. But maybe later it will be. That's how it happened for me. It took me 20 years of game development until I finally decided. You know what? I think I can do art. And really, I only started making art a few years ago, and now I, I love it. It's so awesome. Okay, cool. Now we got to hook up this last animation, and then Go Sword's almost done. You know what, I don't think we need Idle North or Idle South either. Let's test that theory out. Yo, what's up Xbox Taco? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just playing around with the idea. What's up Green? Greenest? Are you the greenest? Nice. What are you trying to say here, PMC? Is this, I imagine there's a dot 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 at the end of here. Yes, exactly. Very cool advice from here. From Lighter Thief. It's true. There's always going to be somebody that's better than you at what you're doing, pretty much. It's very difficult to be the best person in the world at anything. Nice. Oh, okay, cool, PMC. That's awesome. Okay, we got the south. That looked good. North. It looks like it ran into the mountain there, so let's see what happens when we're, like, further south. Sweet, that's looking good. Suck it, blobs. OpenGL loses render context if you upgrade your, your graphics driver? What do you mean? What platform? Oh, I love it. Okay, last thing I want to do. Let's make this... I'm going to turn this into four different swords. So we should... We'll have the... Um, the fire one. The ice one. And the electricity one. And the fear one. That's five different swords. This is a regular ghost sword, too. Nice. I haven't heard of this one. It's called Construct 2. Thanks, Canadian. Yeah, it's, I'll need a lot more funds to make it to Xbox One, but we'll see. Um, it's definitely going to be making it to Retro VGS, which is a cool new console that's coming out. Construct 2. Oh, I've seen this one before. I've been to this link. Okay, so it's a HTML5 game creator. Yeah, totally. This looks really friendly, for sure. Yeah, this is definitely one I would recommend, for sure, to beginners. Uh, 
Oh, on Windows. Huh. Sergeant Sir, uh, thoughts on Handmade Hero and his stream? I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen his stream before. Um, I've only watched a little bit of Jonathan Blow. I haven't seen this guy, Han Handmade Hero. I've, I, don't, I don't know what his name is, but uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of him, and I've, I've seen pictures of some of the game's development and stuff like that, and I think I saw the website a long time ago. It, they started making Handmade Hero right about when I started making Songbringer, too, so... Um, I don't know. I don't really have any thoughts on it. I guess the thoughts, I guess, would be your thoughts. You guys are the ones that have probably seen him. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, the new console is coming out. This is called Retro VGS. And um, it's the, the concept of Retro VGS is it plays new retro games. So, like, for example, Songbringer is a new game that's coming out that's retro, right? So this game, you plug it, you plug in cartridges to play this game. So one of the cartridges that's coming out is going to be Songbringer. So they're going to be launching their own Kickstarter for this in about a month or two or whatever. Um, and when this when this Kickstarter goes off, you'll be able to select a couple games if you want to buy one of their systems for this game for the retro VGS. You can select a couple games and. Um, and you'll get them when you when they finally launch Retro VGS. So basically, the whole concept behind this this th this system is that it's a new system for playing cartridges again. So and that's pretty awesome. Like the cartridges can store like anywhere from half a gig to a gig or something like that. So we're talking new school games, but retro styles. So I'm actually really excited about this game system because another big thing about this versus other game consoles is that they're only ever going to make one retro VGS console. So there's never going to be a retro VGS 2, retro VGS 3, retro VGS 4. Like like recently when they released the PlayStation 4, you can't play PlayStation 3 games, which kind of sucks, right? The whole point of this system is it's meant to last as long as possible. Their whole goal for this thing is longevity. So that's why they're going there. And also it's cool they're doing cartridges, so games can't update themselves. So the games that come out for Retro VGS have to be good, right? Because they have to be good enough to be put onto a cartridge, a cartridge that can never update itself. So just think about that. That's uh, pretty awesome. Because the because the game developers who are making those cartridges, those games, have to make them good enough and test them good enough so that they don't have bugs. Which is how it used to be back in the day, like in the 90s. If you released a game with bugs, that game was forever ridden with those bugs. So you had to test them more. That's what's, that's what's freaking awesome about it. It's gonna, it will force game developers to make good games again. And not release games that are just crappy, that have to be updated. They, some games don't even run these days when you first buy them. Which is, I think it's unethical. You, you shouldn't be releasing a game that costs 60 bucks that... You have to go home and update before you can even play it. I don't think it's cool. But anyways, sorry to, sorry to rant there. That, that game system may be for some people and it may, it may not be for some people too. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to love it. So if you love it, cool. Nice. Good for you, Green. Right on. Is this like a... Is this, is this like a MOBA or is this one of those like uh, little top-down shooters? Looks cool, man. Good for you. Yeah, I'm not saying that every game out there is perfect from the start on consoles or on, on cartridges, but... Um, it will it will make people step up their game development to a, to a higher quality level i think it's true yeah bugs can sneak through and my my strategy for this game is to release it on steam first so i can get most of the big bugs out right 
So if there are any problems, I can continue updating it on Steam. In fact, my plan is to update this game like crazy to add more features anyways. So, but at some point, there will be this game will become refined enough that it's ready for a cartridge. So that's why I'm, I'm releasing on Steam first, and then six months later, I'm going to be releasing on Retro. Uh, Sergeant, well, if you want to play an earlier beta version, you can pre-order at Songbringer.com. But if you if you just want to wait till it comes out for for real, um, it's going to be like January to March, something like that. So in about five months is going to be the first time you can buy it on Steam. And so, but if you want to pre-order, you can get the beta version. So that's that's right here at Songbringer.com. Oh, nice man, good for you. Okay, the next thing I want to do is make these colorable. So I'm going to start out by making them white and then colored in code. So that will kind of add some variety and able to distinguish between the two the, the five types of swords. Hey, what's up, Tefen? How's it going, man? Hey, were you working on Game Boy Jam? Okay, first thing I'm going to get the hue for this guy. Brightness 100, hue 237. We've got R 126. Oh, Ludum Dare, that's right. Yeah, doesn't it? Oh, so I think Ludum Dare is about to start soon, right? It's not now yet. But coming up, right? That's awesome. I'm stoked for everybody doing Ludum Dare and Game Boy Jam, too. Let's see some cool Game Boy Jams. Oh yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya. Yeah. Yeah, Flash is great for making animations. Yeah. Um if you really if you guys want to actually dive into into more depth on the pros and cons of this console, there's a great um a talk by the guy Mike Kennedy. It's a podcast, um, and the good old gamers did a podcast with Mike Kennedy, and he really talks more about the details of this of retro VGS, and also the the difference between this and Ouya, and the difference between this and um, there's another there's another one that came out before Ouya, which was meant to play retro games as well, but it was a totally different kind of concept. Where's their episodes? Nice, man. Cool. Here it is, Retro VGS interview. Yeah, this is a cool podcast that kind of really breaks down the, the the big difference between retro VGS and like oh yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna export all of these. Well, first of all, yeah, I'll just keep that color, but we'll make these desaturated. I think it's both, but I don't know. I haven't I haven't ever done a Ludum Dare. Yeah, it does. I think it's a great way to meet people too. You know, you're gonna meet a, you can meet other game developers that way. All right, T. Good night, man.
Does anyone say Ludum Dare? <laughs> Man, this is great. I don't know if the Meat Lee did so many game dev. Uh, Felix? Uh, no, we were talking about uh, Retro VGS. Do you dare, Ludum Dare? So I'm taking the saturation out of all these frames so I can color them in code procedurally however the heck we want so we can create some variety between the types of swords. The flaming one though is going to really need its own animation. But I think I'm going to save that for another day. Alright, so if I run it now, there should be no color to the to the ghost sword. Very good. We just have a white sword now. Okay, now let's procedurally color them. I'm gonna, I've already got the code already written for this. I just need to change these actual color values and the way it does the colors is in when it launches them. Okay, so the ghost sword is purplish. One forty four, one fifty three, two fifty five. All right, the fire sword is sort of reddish orangish. Two forty seven, one forty seven, one oh nine. Ice one, it's like an icy blue. 108, 230, 255. Two fifty five, two thirty two. And the fear sword. Fear sword is like pretty dark blackish. Fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. In fact, the fear sword might need to be not additive. See how that looks. So this one should be purple now. All right, cool. We got purple again. Oh, another thing I want to do is make it so it can't do more than one at a time. Um, so I'm going to remember to do that, but let's check if that's working with... Um, with the multiple types of swords, so I'm going to make it so... the player only has the fire sword now.
Cool. All right, that looked pretty good. Sort of an orangish one. And I could probably do a, a custom. I'll do a custom animation for that one. That was totally different. Will be on Gog. I'm not sure. Maybe. The first place it's coming out for is Steam, for sure. Um, Steam and Humble Bundle. Um, and then iOS and Retro VGS. And I don't know how much work it is to put it on GOG. Is it is it easy? I'm not sure. Yeah, cool. So we got an Ice Sword now. Icy Ghost Sword. And I think the fear sword is going to be invisible, actually, because additive light and really, really dark don't don't work. Actually, I don't even think it's launching it. Let's go to the component and make it have like a bright red color. It's just to rule out whether it's the color. I think it might actually be um might actually be that it's not even able to launch that kind. Yeah, it's not working. Does it take extra work or is it just sort of like a, I'm pretty sure this is just DRM free, right? Huh. All right, cool. Thank you, a clone geek. This is really helpful to have this link because I, I didn't. I was assuming that it was just, this was harder, but it looks easy. Yeah. Oh, it's easier than Steam. Oh, great. Well, that's good to know. Cool. Awesome. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely because if, if I mean if it's freaking easy, I'll just do it. More platforms is better. Oh, I think what's going on is there's a function called find ghost sword. Oh yeah, that's the problem. I need to be less than or equal to item fear sword. So we'll see how this looks with a dark color and additive lighting. It's probably going to be almost invisible. Yeah. It's like super invisible. So we want that to be black. We want to turn off the additive lighting for it. So that's going to be here in this launch ghost sword method. I'm going to do this manually. So when it launches it, get an entity for it and then set the entities render
back to, oh, I think I have a default for this already. Maybe not. I thought I had one in here. There it is. Oh, it's K default blend funk. There. So that'll disable its additive lighting. Oh, I want to only, sorry. I only want to do that. If the item type is the fear sword. Yeah, Derdega, this is C++. Alright, so, um, yeah, if this works, then this fear sword will now be black. And because I'm at full health, it shouldn't go very far. Oh yeah, super black now. I wonder why it's going at maximum... It's not working with its duration. Let's set a breakpoint here and figure out why that's not working. Okay, so yeah, we'll set a breakpoint here. Let it run. Figure out why the alpha is not working. So, because the fear sword, fear sword's opposite of the ghost sword. The ghost sword works off of your courage, your life force, your your character's health, basically. And the the fear sword works off of how much, how little health you have. So, we've got a regular alpha of 1.0. Right. That's cool. Oh, this is this, no wonder. I already see what's wrong. I did the math wrong here. It's not one over, it's one minus. And we'll do a clamp here just to make sure this is all good too. Clamp it between zero and one. Just make sure we got a good value there. Herringbone weapon? Is that what this is? Or are you calling out a new weapon? Yo, what's up, Momir? Welcome, man. Just about to finish up making this new fear sword. It's a compliment to the ghost sword. It's the opposite. Oh, yeah. Cause, okay, so I'm at full health right now. The fear sword is not kicking in at all. Let's lose some more health. Alright, cool. Now it's starting to have the fear sword. Now the fear sword is going a little bit farther. A little bit farther yet. Yeah, nice. I love this. This is great. So, if anybody's just catching this stream, this is this game's called Songbringer. It's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. And the item you're looking at here is called the Fear Sword. It's going to be a super rare item. So, you normally have this item called the Ghost Sword, which you can find, which gives you this power to shoot projectiles whenever you're at high health. And the higher health you are, the farther they go. The Fear Sword is the opposite. It's a rare item, but it it gives you the power to shoot projectiles farther when you're at lower health. So that's what that's what that is. So now that I'm down to like one only one health, that's why I can shoot this sword so far. All right. Uh, no, Jonah19. 
Oh, and the black makes it look like fish bones? Yeah, it kind of looks weird, right? I kind of want to make it a little more transparent. Actually, I could just do that with the code. Um, can you have the, both the ghost sword and the fear sword? No. So the way you get the fear sword is you actually combine your ghost sword with fear somehow. I'm not sure what item fear will actually be, but there's item crafting in this game. If you haven't seen it, actually, we should also show you what that is. <clears throat> yeah, not quite. Almost the end of the stream, but not quite. Hey, thanks, Orgo, or Agro Man. Yeah, so this game also has item crafting too. So this is a little. It's it's different than Zelda in the sense that you collect some items and some of them you can craft. Um, when you start off the game, you actually start with um, this teleport cube. So, oh yeah, it's not letting me use the teleport cube because there's enemies on the screen. Let me kill the enemies first. Oh no, the enemy got... The enemy ran off the screen. I can't... Oh, you little dick. Run off the screen so I can't use it. That's a definite bug. So what the way I'm going to fix that bug is make it so enemies can never, ever walk off the screen. There we go. So here's the teleport cube. You throw down the teleport cube and it warps you back to the other cube, wherever the heck that is. You start off the game with your teleport cube on your ship Songbringer. So this is the ship Songbringer. You actually can come back here while you're during the game. And you, this is the item crafter guy. So you can give him items, like if I want to give him the sword or whatever. You would have the so basically you would have the ghost sword. You would place that item down, and you would also pet, place down your fear or whatever, and that's what will allow you to craft these items. So I don't have any items I can actually craft right now that will actually work. Oh well. <clears throat> Thanks, Dardiga. Uh, Skittle Fiddler, getting there, getting there, close. Dardiga, yes, I can port this game to consoles, and there are. I'm already planning to port it to Retro VGS, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Are if I can get the funds, and if or if the game does well. So I've got that on my Songbringer page, pre-order. So Songbringer.com is the website for this game, and um, on the pre-order page, it kind of shows how much funding this game has already gotten. So we're at like 51% of the way to getting to, to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So, yeah, the initial funding came from Kickstarter. So, once again, thank you everybody on Kickstarter. Uh, PMC, no, I'm not using a mic. Okay, so what I wanted to do, I want to make it so you can't ever launch two Ghost Swords at once. So, um... Let's have let's make a function. I think I've got a function already which searches for the top hat. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this even simpler. I'm gonna make it so when it uh Yeah, we could do it this way. We'll give the we'll give I'm gonna give the um the ghost sword a name component so it's easy to find if there's already one of them so oh and also I want to make the fear sword so it's got a little more opacity so if shot ID we're gonna go entity add component shot ID name component Uh, Momir, my, my laptop has a mic built in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, um... Should be good. Why is that... Oh. 
new name component. There we go. And I think it'd be better to use a name right here. So we'll need to do this actually up here. Okay, so we got name go sword, and I can use that around here and here and here, so I don't have to redo this all the time. Name, we'll capture that name. And here we can go and search for it. So. We can go name component find name. Now, if EID is greater than zero, return. So we can't launch two swords at once. Let's see if that works. So if this does work, then we'll be able to launch one of these swords at once. All right, so yeah, I am getting kind of close to the end of my stream here. Um, I think I'm probably going to finish it up here. So this is this is the last little touch to kind of get the, this ghost sword, fear sword, fire ghost sword, all these swords that you can launch as projectiles. I'm pretty much done with them at this point. I do need to do some more art for the for the fire one. Okay, so we're using the fear sword right now. We got to get hurt. Cool. Yeah, it works. Now let's switch. Let's see if that's about right. Yeah, I want to do a little bit. What's up, baby? Yeah, there's better ones too out there. Yeah. Yep. I'm streaming. Hi. Go check out the other ones. Um. Yeah, so I wanted this to be a little more opaque. Let's check that out. A little more opaque, and then I'll check out the other ones to make sure they're still working good. still it's a little bit too opaque now so 128 196 I think 158 is fire ratio times 255 I love the fire ratio yeah 158 cool let's do 158 instead and I'm just gonna leave it at that trust that that that's about about good and then I'm gonna go Change it so we're using the the ghost sword, any one of these ghost swords. Let's do lightning so we can test it a little bit easier. And I just want to see, I want to make sure that I can't launch two of them at once. Nice, that's better. So now you can't really overuse it.
I'm probably going to make it a little bit, a little bit more. It's kind of too awesome in the sense that you, you shouldn't be able to have this all the time. So maybe when you get down to half health, it will actually be fully off. Right now it goes down to where you're at. So let's do that right now. It's like a little bit, little bit too awesome of an item. That blue guy, he's totally, he's ditching, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a bug. I need to make it so enemies can never walk off the screen, but it's true. There's, there's this little, there's some, for some reason, yeah, I've seen that guy do that several times. I don't know why, but he just loves to get off the screen right there. Yeah, so it would be like this. When you're at half health, right? Half health would give you, or when you're at full health, that gives you 0.5 on the alpha. Oh, we want to do actually more like this. No, yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. We want to do float. So it'd be alpha times two. So basically, yeah. Yeah, times two. So when you're at half health, no, that's not right. Man, why is it so hard to figure out right now? No, you can never undo it. Yeah. Good question. Very good, cool question, right? Yeah, once you craft an item, it's permanent in that in that game. So you would have to start that game over if you really wanted to. Oops, undo it. So, But the whole point of this game is it's replayable. It's a procedurally generated game. So I think that's okay in the sense that you're it's a permanent thing. So when you're at, I want you to be at zero when you, yeah, so we would subtract 0 0.5, multiply by two. Right? So if you're at if you're at an alpha of 1.0, it's gonna be 1.0 minus 0.5, which is 0.5 times two is one. So yeah, one stays at one. And then once you get down to 0.5, so if alpha is 0.5, we got alpha minus 0.5 is zero times two. That's correct. So if we're at 0 0.75, that would be 0 0.75 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.25 times two is 0 0.5. So yeah, that's all cool. That's how it should be. And then alpha Let's see if the fear sword though would still work. No, that's a good question there, Jonah One Nine. No, you can't craft if you've already crafted your ghost. You you can only get one ghost sword in the game, and once you've crafted it into like a fire one or whatever, it's done. That's it. So if you do find fear, the actual fear item, you can still craft it with something else. There's gonna be other things you can combine fear with to do that. But um, yeah, so that's that's a that's a really big decision, right? So if you find if you find that as a player, and you if you find it in a certain world, it's that's why it's going to be a rare thing, and it's also it's also kind of cool that you can't combine it twice. So, good question. How do how do you like the sounds of all this? So if you got the fear sword. 
then our health is at We just want to do it before that there. Yeah. So if we got the fear sword, 1.0 minus, it's going to be the exact same thing. Cool. Okay, let's test that out, make sure that works, and then that's going to be the end of today's stream. Oh, one thing I should, let's make it easier. By setting no initial health, where the heck is that? Take off these life containers. Oh, that's in settings. There, initial HP zero. Yeah, I want it to be a tough decision to make as a player. If you do find some elements, because the elements can, can also combine with lots of other things too. So fire, ice, teleport, those can combine with, uh, or I mean, yeah, the fire, ice, and the lightning can combine with teleport cubes as well. So like the fire, like the fire uh, teleport is one. So you can turn into fire and teleport yourself, right? And there's also going to be an ice teleport, a lightning teleport, and there's also the regular teleport without those. And so I guess there's probably going to be a fear teleport too. Okay, so I've lost I've lost some health and now the sword is very short. That's cool. I like it like that. So this is, I love this. The Jonah19's suggestion from yesterday was um, why don't you take this and instead of making it like the um, the Zelda thing where you lose any health at all and you can't you can't use it, why don't you make it so it's based on how much health you have? I like that a lot. So now we're almost back at full health, and the sword goes pretty far. That's awesome. Yeah, this is about right. Let's lose... Let's lose almost all health. There we're down to a... Two-thirds health. Here we're only down to a third, yeah, and you can't even use it. Cool. This is looking good. Yeah, so tomorrow's tomorrow's stream will be the same time. So yeah, I'll be back streaming tomorrow. I start my streams usually about four p.m. ish, but really the best way to find to to uh, catch my live streams is to follow me on Twitch because sometimes I'm a few hours earlier because I'm really trying to do earlier streams to accommodate for you guys in Europe because I know it's really late for you guys in Europe. So. So yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, that's pretty much it for today's stream. I'm just testing out this fear sword to make sure it works. So we lose a little bit of health. Okay, we still can't use it. Lose a little more health. Still can't use it. I should be able to use it by now. Oh, now it's kicking in. Okay, so there's a problem with that. Oh, Pacific time, yeah. Pacific time, PST. So yeah. So cheers, you guys. Have a great night, and um, we'll see you tomorrow if you're around.